Hi, I'm Maps Technology Coach Brett Chagru. Welcome to the Tech Enabled Agent. Joe Bogart, Maps Coach. Great to see you. Hey, Coach. All right. We have a very important thing we're going to teach people today. We're going to do two things. We're going to show them how to set up their goals. Yep. And you being the great coach that you are, are going to actually explain what these numbers mean. Sure. Because um, I don't think I'm talking out of turn here. You've met a lot of agents, and half the time they make up these numbers. Uh, yeah, they do. Actually, as you start interrogating them, you ask the questions like, why? Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you come up with $100,000? And it's some arbitrary answer. That's correct. And so this allows us to go investigate into it. Yeah, there's a book that Gary actually had leadership read that dates back to, I think, the late 80s or early 90s. And wouldn't you bet that a salesperson wanted to make $100,000 a year in their first year back then, too? Yeah. Isn't that funny how that is? <laughs> it has never changed. Yeah. So I'm well, going sure. to simply show you how to go through this. Mm -hmm and you are going to explain what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's go check out our goals. So in our goals, it's pretty simple. We set them and then it's going to feed throughout command, right? So here, Joe, we're in our dashboard. Right. You can see it's letting us know that we're labbing it for 2019 still. And on our dashboard, we can break it out for this year and this month. But ultimately, we want to go over here to reports because this is where they live. And reports is where we track the most six important data points, Joe, inside of command, yeah. phone, email, address, neighborhood, home anniversary, and birthday. Yeah, hey, Brett, when we go on to this, one of the big things, and we just, um, last week we had, Gary had his mastermind mm -hmm. uh, for his group, and I have to be in that group, and one of the things he was talking about is specifically what you just showed us on the database. So as we spend time there, he just said there's two big important pieces for having a dynamic, successful business. One is the leads that create from your that you create, mm -hmm. and that's all, obviously what you're going to be generating out of your database. So, as myself as a rainmaker, as my objective is to own those leads, right? Mm -hmm. And then number two is to have your staff to be able to come and support and service and how you're going to be uh, connecting with that group of men and women. Yes. Okay. Right. This is ultimately how we become that millionaire real estate agent, right? That's correct. And we're here in a shift. And if we can do this more intentionally, we don't have to keep. Yeah. spending money on all those different types Absolutely. of internet leads, et cetera. Yeah. So you can see here, breaks out leads, contacts, appointments set, kept agreements, unders and closed. And you're just gonna click this big old button here and it's gonna walk everyone through a Kelly guide. So yeah. you get started. We are gonna set naturally for 2020. And now we just have to frankly go through the numbers here, yeah. right? So let's walk through them. All right, so first Joe, our annual profit goal, right? If you want to be mm -hmm. net millionaire real estate agents is a million dollars. And then we're going to work off of our average commission being 10,000, right? So if your market's different, you can come in here and you can type in say 7,500. Oops, 75,000 sounds amazing. That would be awesome. <laughs> 7,500. So then Joe, this is where I mm -hmm. actually, talking to agents all the time and second enabled agent is where I think we start to, to frankly lose people. So let's go through operating and cost of sales. Yeah, so first of all, uh, we know Gary talks about in the Red Book, it is that our expenses are going to equal right around 30%, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you are an agent with, uh, let's say you're a level two agent, your, your expenses are going to be much less than that. In fact, it should be more around what we've noticed in coaching is uh, that those people are going to be around, uh, around where they're going to be able to net around 70%, 60 to 70% net. Mm -hmm. So obviously your, your cost of sales is pretty minimal. And then where your most your your expenses are going to be in your operating expenses side of the category. Mm -hmm. As you grow, you come a level four, level five team, and, and you continue to grow. Then the objective is, and interesting enough, it was brought up last week out of the mastermind, and all the research and what they're still saying is it should be still 30, 30, 40. So, so that's what we should be looking to aim at, even as you grow your business beyond a million, two million, three million, whatever in GCI. Hmm. That. Yeah, so that was really a great discussion. So what we're looking at is realistically how we're going to set up for operating expenses. Let's just base it upon for a million. You're going to have a team. You're going to, so um, that team's going to have it where their expenses are going to be thirty percent. Cost of sale, Brett. Where sure. are they going to be? Thirty uh, percent. There you go. <laughs> right. And so you can see here the numbers change as we're working around here. What my estimated GCI needs to be. Yeah. Etc. And if you don't know, you can simply hover over those the eye here and it lets you, it doesn't tell you as well as Joe just did, but it gives you, a, gives you a basic breakdown of what operating expenses are and then what your cost of sales are, right? And cost of sales is anything that naturally relates to a sale. Absolutely. And operating is you're paying it whether you sell a house or not. Yeah. Okay? 
So then your balance of business, if you don't know, 50-50 is a good way to go, right? Yeah, right on the economic model. All right, so we hit save and continue, and up pops our inverted triangle. Yeah. And then we start with leads up top. So I was teaching earlier here in Austin at Market Center number one, Joe, and if I wanted to be a millionaire real estate agent, leads, which is a one-way conversation, I needed 5,100 leads next year to work my way through this. So in order for you to obtain to get to a million dollars, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's spend a couple of minutes on this. Um, just because again, out of the masterminds, Gary, we camped out literally for the whole day, just talking about how we build the business, how we're building our business. And once again, because leads is one of the key primary things he said for a dynamic business, it's leads and your staff leads is where you got to go and interrogate so when you look at the triangle right and we mm -hmm. look at leads listings and leverage one of the key things is that the leads and where the sources of those leads are coming from so in other words we can call it buckets mm -hmm. sources wherever you want to do but where are your top three sources that are going to generate those leads to get you to that million dollars gci or what or if we're going to do a net million dollars gci then it's going to be much greater than that right mm -hmm. so it's going to be those key sources though that those leads and how many leads are you going to be required to make that happen in this case it's how many again uh me it was about 5100 there you go you okay. know i saw when i was teaching in the market center i saw the breakout i actually looked up and went wow it's a lot of leads yeah <laughs> but remember a lead for anybody who doesn't remember, because commands based on the MRA 2.0 is a one-way contact. You know, somebody fills out your web form, a Facebook lead format, that type of thing, where a contact is like this. We're That's talking correct. to each other. That's correct. One of the ways that the contact's done. Obviously, like we know in bold, it could be by texting. It also mm -hmm. could be by picking up the phone, correct? Yes. People yeah. need to be texting more. It has a 98% well, open rate. And it depends on, right, we mm -hmm. want to connect with the way our people want to be heard from or our new potential client. If they want to connect by text, that's how we're going to connect with them. Yep. You still need to talk to them because you're going to still have to have the conversation that's going to be required when we start going to getting contracts or agreements signed and where you're going to work with them, right? Mm -hmm. so, exactly. Don't want to get ahead of that yet, but that's when <laughs> things will go on. So they're simply going to come in here, Joe, and these rates are set for them. And if you hover over this, it tells you what each item represents. So here it's each item below represents the rate at which one item converts into another. So example, you convert 5% of your leads to contact. So you can see here we have leads to contact set at 10, Joe. It seems pretty reasonable. Contacts to appointments set at 60. Then we have 85, 85, 85, and under to close at 85. I think we can just leave that, right? You, you can definitely run with that. That's a little bit higher than on some of it than the MREA, and yet we can run with those models. By the way, again, this is going to be specific to your numbers and your market. So Although Brett's showing these numbers, your numbers could be higher, mm -hmm. possibly, or it could be lower. You do want to make sure what we set those percentages up properly so that you have the right number of lead flow coming in. Yes. I mean, let's say contacts to appointment set. I could argue that's a little high, but you need to know your numbers. Yeah. Right? That's correct. And so once you establish this, you hit save and continue. And here, here's your year. Yeah. Set simple, right? We have this year. Now, one of the things I'd like to stress to anybody is that sometimes you know you set your goals and it's March and now you're like wow we're 25 percent high behind our goal that yearly goal when you look at it way out there closing in oh, December exactly. can be really hard to reach yeah so one of the things I really like about uh, the command goal setting is we can get it down to the month because yeah. I might be able to catch up over two to three to four months yeah well Brett and that's the story that a lot of people tell themselves mm -hmm. and the answer is yes you can and yet the reality is very few do agree one of the things that uh we again i can think about so many times gary's brought this up to us is that so our year on in 2020 started when started in october that's right trick question i knew you would answer it <laughs> and 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 so knowing it started in october the activities we're doing right now should be in alignment with what that goal is mm -hmm. so in other words when i look at it like um uh, the teams that we're coaching right now we're looking at our pipeline to make sure that we have enough tens for this month we have enough nines going into december and then enough eights for the month of january right tens in, in november so knowing that is looking at how many do you is it required for you to pin in the month of jane i mean december so you can close what you've got to hit your target rate for january correct mm -hmm, exactly okay so it all comes back down to the lead flow and then interrogating your pipeline to make sure you have enough in your pipeline and then going through and grading that pipeline and asking the 10 if they're really a 10. do we want to role play that script or just sure, like that let's start. so it could be just simple as this like uh, so for uh, i'm going to call you you're a buyer okay okay um and we're working together so ring ring 
Hello. Hey, Brett, this is Joe Bogart with Keller Williams. Have a quick minute. Yeah, sure, Joe, how are you? Doing great. Hey, I noticed you've been looking on our search uh, through our site recently, and it looks like you've been looking over in the Blueberry neighborhood. And just quickly tell me, uh, what are you discovering now that time as you've been spending, it looks like more time than there? Um, you know, it's starting to look, it looks like it has some of the things I like. It's closer to activities like, you know, trails for walking and biking. Trails, right. Um, you know, it's great. near, it's near um, a couple of great supermarkets that we go to regularly. And Perfect. it's the type of school we'd like to send our kids to. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is besides, you know, it sounds like you're outdoors, first of yeah. all. You love the outdoors. Important for you too, a school system. So I'm assuming you have a child. Yeah, he's four. Oh, congratulations on that. And then obviously access to services like you, know, you mentioned, like the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So Brett, let me ask you a question. If I or my team and I could find you the home you're looking for and it showed up in the neighborhood you would want, the price you would want, would you buy it today? Hmm. I could, yeah. Okay, now we'll stop there. So right, right now, I, I would vet into that a little bit more and I would define for you, I'd find out exactly if you were truly a 10. If you were, then it would be saying, great, Brett, would be a great time that we could get together based upon what you've been looking at so that we can ensure that when we go and show you the house that's fit for you, right? So it's wrapping up, then I would get a buyer's agency agreement then move forward with you to look into mm -hmm. putting a house under contract in the month of November. Now, what's amazing is when we set our goals here in command, yeah. you just set an appointment, yeah. right? So that's, we just move the ball forward that little, the next inch. That goes back to the leads, mm -hmm. absolutely. And the con, so when we look to appointments set to kept, that's why I said I would vet you in more. I would be starting to qualify you because then I want to get clarity because we also have the other pipeline. The pipeline is the number of buyers that agreements that I have right now. Let's mm -hmm. say uh, we'll do listings, same thing. If I have buyer agreements that are signed right now, I'm going to be doing the same question, maybe asking the buyer's agent to make sure that I'm not hallucinating that they, I hallucinate they're a 10 and the reality is they're an eight. Cause let's say you would have said, you know what? Actually, no, um, a couple things have come up and it looks like it's not gonna be till the first of the year. And I went and qualified that more and it truly was until the month of January. Then I would know that you're not actually a 10, you're an eight. And here's the rule. We do not show anybody, especially this time of year, that and, and the higher your production, even how more important it is, that they, you're only showing the tens and the nines. Mm -hmm. The eights, they, they are going to look around. You're not gonna spend your time on that because it's your time over task that gets you the reward. I just had this happen with some best friends of mine. Okay. They cannot buy a home till May. They wanna go look in November. And awesome. I love them, but we both know that I'm, they're not gonna see these homes. They know the town, they've lived there for That's enough right. years. We're just frankly showing homes for fun. Yeah, and you and you're absolutely right. And the, what I and when, if you look at what your time would be in the investment, there is no ROI for that immediate, right? And the what the best thing you can do is like you did, you get scripted, you're clear with them, and then they're all happy and they're willing mm -hmm. to wait till that time because you're going to keep in communication. You're just not going to go show them. Yes, people will respond to no, of course, right? Okay. And so to keep this on task, right? Why we we turn down. these leads, mm -hmm. right? I met you at an open house, a Facebook ad, whatever. Yeah. And I worked you into a contact. And what you just did scripting wise right. is how you hit that million dollar profit goal. These right. are the conversations you need to have all day and every day. So the last thing to say is the higher your goal is uh, for the number count, the more important it gets clarity about your interrogating your pipeline and making sure what you really do believe you have the number of lead flow that's coming in mm -hmm. that gets you to those contact that contacts you're gonna reach out to set those appointments. Yeah, and you know, you, you hit here, right? You finish this up. Yeah and we're done more or less, and you go back and you view your goals. And voila. And here they are. Yeah. And you look here, right? I changed my number, right? I had a $10,000 um, average commission right. in the beginning and I changed to 7,500, so my leads went up from about 5,100 to 6,800. Right. And it works based off of my numbers here. So 682, 508 for appointment set, straight down to my average commission is uh, $7,500. I know I need to close 214 units. In order to hit your goal. Yep. That's right. It's that simple, right? Yeah, it is. And, and what I love about this tool is um, there's a there's few things I love about it. First of all, it is your dashboard. Mm -hmm. You can look at every day. And, if, and, um, and we know with the teams, that this is going to be coming out for all of our team members. So we'll be able to see each one of our team members. Right now, today, if I'm looking at this for myself and, my, and I'm a level three agent, this is awesome for me. This allows me to be able to go ahead and see now, am I on path mm -hmm. for one of the goals I'm setting for 2020? Because as you know, we're setting in, even though this shows this year, we have the 2020 goal we can set up now also. Mm -hmm. So they can put that in there. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. this is, you can see here, I have a sort for 2020. Right, or 2019. We're, we're still labbing this for 2019, just yep. to make sure we get all the parts right, because I think we would like to have our numbers for a business yes. correct here. And you know, we can still see here, if I want to be on goal for 2019, well then I need, I need, that, I need that many yeah. leads per month, right? I need that many contract, or contacts rather. It's a, it's a focusing tool. Yeah, it is. Do we want to talk anything else about like, how do you identify like where your sources of business are coming from? Sure. Do we want to go there? What? Okay, well, there's two things you can look at. You can go page 138 in your MREA book, and or you can also go into um, the shift book. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to show this, but sure. And this is what it looks like in your MREA book. You can see. And what it does, and if you can read those words, basically what you're looking at is, these are the areas where I'm going to prospect, and these are the areas where I can market to, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the shift book, it's on page 65, identifies all those sources. And then also page 55, though, does the same thing and you rank them, right? Mm -hmm. And every month we're reviewing those on a monthly basis. And that's what I love about this. The second thing I really love about this dashboard is I am interrogating really the reality of where my business is coming from. And it allows me quickly to go and identify those sources for the month. Mm -hmm. So when I'm interrogating, okay, I have X amount of leads that are coming from, but I'm not getting the return off that investment. Let's say that one of those is, I'll just make this up, but let's say one of those is for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. And I notice that um, I'm spending two hours a day working for sale by owners and I am getting only 13% of that where I'm getting 17%, let's say a call in expires and I'm only spending 30 minutes. That's a wake up call. That means that I know that my time an investment it's a lot it's a lot more important for me to go into the expired side mm -hmm. than spend my time because i'm realizing that i'm spending my dollar productivity acti my dollar productivity activity is a lot lower on the fisbo side than it is expired side oh yeah i mean i spent my first six months in real estate way back in 2010 <laughs> yeah. holding three open houses a week and guess what i learned i was really bad at open house conversion except i didn't have the knowledge of being a coach at that time i right. couldn't go Mm. ask someone to correct my gaps for me. I just kind of drifted out there trying to figure it out. Mm. And so if I could attract it like this way back in 2010, I would have seen pretty quickly, I have held 35 open houses and I have zero contacts for that. I'm clearly very bad at open houses <laughs> and I need to work on my skills or get another tap. Yeah, in fact, you nailed the other part. When you are interrogating those sources, it could be a skill set, right? Mm -hmm. um, it could be a source issue or it could be also the second part, it could be your skills, which means then again, it goes back to the conversions. And I love that about the Red Book because at least we know in the Red Book on, um, it's gonna be on page, go back to the here. Oh, and the economic model. So if we go back to the economic model and you look at that, I'm gonna, um, one of the things you're gonna discover is that um, your conversion numbers, and that's gonna be on page 183. Um, here's the first thing you wanna look at, Brad is the number of listing appointments and then your conversion rate being at 80% mm -hmm. of the listings taken, right? And then I know out of my listings taken, I should have at least 65% or whatever your market says. So when you pull up on the MLS, if it says that 75, 76% of those homes are selling when you get them on the market, then that should be where you, at least should be your standard or better, but knowing that you never would go below that number of mm -hmm. 65%. So again, it's just interrogating your conversion numbers, which this allows you to do. So what we're saying here is real estate hasn't changed. No. <laughs> right? It is still, the, I know while everyone's waiting for MREA 2.0, yeah. it hasn't changed since the first MREA. You have to talk to people, have systems, know your numbers, That's right. and then do the same thing that works every, every day, every yeah. single day. Absolutely. Hmm. Imagine that, Joe. Systems and models, huh? <laughs> it's pretty simple. So come up here, finish your goals, You'll see them every single day when you come into your dashboard right down here. They'll populate. So that way it's right in front of your face. Yeah. This is how you should start your day. And then you fo simply, Joe, focus on making this database health score higher. Turn it into a green. Focus on that as your one thing. It becomes green at 50%. You know, and this segues to uh, one of the things Jeff Woods was talking about this week at the One Thing Retreat. And one of the things, uh, uh, the key thing they were talking about is your 411. Mm -hmm. And your 411 is going to be a reflective of the, these numbers. And if I had a, um, if I am off schedule from last week, knowing that my goal is whatever to sell mm -hmm. uh, 20 homes and I realize and, and to list 15 homes and I know I'm only listed one, my second week becomes a different week than I thought it would be. And it lines up with my schedule. It has to line up with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And There's so, a lot of ways you can play with this. It's funny the way we can just, simplify it by using technology because it lets us know everything. 
It does. It's, it is a great accountability partner. <laughs> it always knows your numbers. And if you're willing to listen to it, we'll hold you to them. Absolutely. All right, Joe, you have any uh, parting wisdom for everyone? Um, I would say that the biggest thing is if you haven't done this yet, get it, get into this, mm -hmm. get your, get your goals in for next year and get them done now mm -hmm. because we're already a month behind. Yes, we are. When it comes to production side and, uh, and I don't know about you and yet um, I can't tell you how many times as an agent, being an agent myself, um, when I have been in production mode, how my January feels to me much more secure than when I know that I've been doing busy work and not working on what really mattered most to really grow to my goal. And so think about it this way is if um, what would be more pleasurable than going, you walk into January, if my goal was to have 10 homes under contract to close in January, and I had that coming into my January because I did my activities today, kept me on track for, with following the numbers I know I need to do. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? Changes your life. Changes your life. You'll and actually really hit those 2020 goals. Yeah. And so the first thing you should do is set your goals right now. Absolutely. And then not wait to start hitting those numbers on January 1st. Start the activities at that level today so you build in a strong January. 100% agree. Oh, yeah. it's Joe. Yeah. Thank you for right. the wisdom. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Go set some goals. Yeah. Go make your money. <laughs> Have a great day.